Happy Sabbath, members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. It's Micah from the Two. As always, my papers can be found on my blog totally for free, ad-free. You can download them, print them off, and edit them, do whatever you want with them. Um, print a couple off and burn them if it makes you feel better. Do whatever do whatever you got to do. Um, in this video paper, what I have here is a talk written by our prophet, President Russell M. M. Nelson, and he did this uh, in April 2020, right before the conference. I am going to be breaking down and going over this talk. You can see what he said in black and what I said in blue to clearly differentiate between the two. And let us begin. The future of the church preparing the world for the Savior's second coming. You and I get to participate in the ongoing restoration of the gospel of Jesus Christ. It is wondrous. It is not man-made. Now, my commentary. President Nelson here is making reference to celestial law. What needs to be restored? In the last couple of years, I've noticed a trend among the leaders of the church teaching the youth to say that the church is still being restored versus G uh, Joseph Smith restored the fullness of the gospel. I found this to be problematic because many of the youth were not also taught that it was Joseph's right to restore the fullness of the gospel. So a lot of members think that the apostles and prophets right now are, quote, in the process of restoring the fullness of the gospel, end quote. Uh, this is utter pishposh. Only the revealer of your dispensation, only the head of your dispensation, only Joseph Smith has the right to restore the fullness of the gospel. To this end was he foreordained. The leaders of the church today are only in the process of changing procedure. This has nothing, absolutely nothing, to do with the fullness of the gospel. Going from three hours to two hours on Sunday, nothing to do with the fullness of the gospel. Going from missionary discussions to preach my gospel, nothing to do with the fullness of the gospel. So I was wary when this trend started because I knew, and it was, I knew it would be, and it was, hijacked. Um, so I knew it would be hijacked. by Satan's progressive element in the church. This is not what this has reference to. This has reference to Joseph Smith coming back and restoring the law, the celestial law, the fullness of the gospel. Quote, God through his prophet. Okay, now this was said in uh, 1853, and uh, this was not referring to uh, anybody other than Joseph Smith. God through his prophet will roar out of Zion. His voice will be heard in spite of all the confusion and indignant opposition from many nations. His servant, the prophet in Zion, will have a marvelous boldness to rebuke them and to lay down before them in plainness and in flexible firmness the law of the Lord. I think that this quote pretty much perfectly summarizes uh, my paper, Joseph Smith to Return. Now, here's a here's a little star here. I heard a quote from somebody because um, this is this quote was actually it's John Taylor who was a president of the church, um, but it came, this quote came from Millennial Star. Now, I heard a quote from somebody said some something along the lines of they don't accept anything from the Millennial Star or the book of uh, bu uh, the book called Mormon Doctrine written by uh, Bruce R. McConkie. They only use the manuals from the church. Now, I had a great chuckle at this. It's like they don't read the references in the manual. 25% of the manual is quoting McConkie and Mormon Doctrine and the Millennial Star. Um, so I, I find that hilarious. Uh, half, of the, half of the stuff on Armageddon uh, in the Old Testament student manual is referenced in the Millennial Star. So... Uh, you don't, I don't, I don't use the Millennial Star. I only use the the manuals of the church, but hmm, the manuals of the church use Millennial Star, so that's a conundrum. Back to President Nelson. Nelson, it comes from the Lord who said, "I will hasten my work in its time." This work is em empowered by a divine announcement made 200 years ago. It consisted of only seven words. This is my beloved son. Hear him. Uttered by Almighty God, that announcement brought a young Joseph Smith to the Lord Jesus Christ. Those seven words launched the restoration of his gospel. Why? My commentary. I don't believe it is a coincidence that President Nelson mentions right now how we are still restoring the church 
and then pivots directly to Joseph Smith. He knows who is going to be restoring the fullness of the gospel. Back to President Nelson, because our living God is a loving God. He wants his children to gain immortality and eternal life. The great Latter-day work of which we are part was established on schedule to bless a waiting and weeping world. I cannot speak of the restoration in tempered tones. This fact of history is absolutely stunning. It is incredible. It is breathtaking. How amazing is it that the messengers from heaven came to give authority and power to this work? Today, the Lord's work in the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints is moving forward at an accelerated pace. The church will have an unprecedented, unparalleled future. I hath not seen nor ear heard the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. Remember that the fullness of Christ's ministry lies in the future. Remember that the fullness of Christ's ministry lies in the future. The prophecies of his second coming have yet to be fulfilled. We are just building up to the climax of of this last dispensation when the Savior's second coming becomes a reality. My commentary. Now, well, seventh sealers are going to have a hard time explaining this. Their main argument is that the major signs of the Savior's coming have already happened, and in 2021, we're going to experience the great and dreadful day. They either argue that these things have happened, such as the 144,000, but that it was entirely figurative, or that they have happened outright, but that the prophet never identified them, and the people just never understood it when it happened. Well, the problem with that is that President Nelson right here is saying crystal clear that the prophecies of the Lord's second coming are yet to be fulfilled. And what are these? Well, Joseph Smith returning, the celestial law being restored, the return of the ten tribes, the redemption and building of New Jerusalem, etc., etc., these aren't happening in six months to a year, people. Back to President Nelson's words. Gathering Israel on both sides of the veil. A necessary prelude to that second coming is the long-awaited gathering of scattered Israel. This doctrine of the gathering is one of the most, is one of the mo the important teachings of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. I think it's one of the most. I added most there. The Lord has declared, I give unto you a sign that I shall gather in from their long dispersions my people, O house of Israel, and shall establish again among them my Zion. So, anyway, well, my commentary. Once again, I don't believe it is a coincidence that President Nelson says that the signs of the Lord's second coming have yet to be fulfilled, and then immediately pivots to the gathering of Israel and the building of Zion. He is basically saying, hey, guys, this hasn't happened yet. He then points to 3 Nephi 21. Brothers and sisters, this is the chapter. Joseph Smith being resurrected, the marvelous work and a wonder commencing, the return of the ten tribes, the building of New Jerusalem, and then the Savior coming and living in New Jerusalem. Brothers and sisters, that is the chapter. We, back to President Nelson's words, we not only teach this doctrine, but we pr participate in it. We do so as we help to gather the elect of the Lord on both sides of the veil. It's part of this planned destiny of the earth and its inhabitants, our kindred dead, are to be redeemed. Mercifully, the invitation to come unto Christ can also be extended to those who died without a knowledge of the gospel. Part of their preparation, however, requires the earthly efforts of others. We gather pedigree charts, create family group cheat sheets, and do temple work vicariously to gather individuals unto the Lord and unto their families. Families are to be sealed together for all eternity. A welding link is to be forged between the fathers and the children in our time. A whole, complete, and perfect union of all dispensation keys and powers are to be welded together. For these sacred purposes, holy temples now dot the earth. I emphasize again that construction of these temples may not change your life, but your service in the temple surely will. Now my commentary. Now there's a lot to say here. Joseph Smith taught that the three spirits of the restoration are first Elias, second Elijah, and thirdly Messiah. Elias is the spirit of missionary work. The spirit of Elijah is that of temple work and sealings. And the spirit of Messiah is, well, you know. If there is any doubt what time period you're living in, you are not awake. Doctrine and Covenants 128.18 says, which he has up here quote, uh, referenced, 
I might have rendered a plainer translation of this, but it's sufficiently plain to suit my purposes as it stands. It is sufficient to know in this case that the earth will be smitten with a curse unless there is a welding link of some kind or other between the fathers and the children upon some some subject or other. And behold, what is that subject? It is the baptism for the dead, for we cannot with we without them cannot be made perfect, neither can they without us be made perfect. Neither can they nor we be made perfect without those who have died in the gospel also. For it is necessary in the ushering in of the dispensation of the fullness of times, which dispensation is now beginning to usher in, that a whole and complete and perfect union and welding together of dispensations and keys and powers and glories should take place and be revealed from the days of Adam even to the present time. And not only this, but those things which never have been revealed from the foundation of the world, but have been kept hid from the wise and prudent shall be revealed unto babes and sucklings in this, the dispensation of the fullness of times. End quote from Doctrine and Covenants. In the scripture, we learn of the sealing link that needs to be made by all of the human race to that of Adam through temple work. The link cannot be made without us, the living, doing their work. So we, quote, save them, end quote, and we cannot be saved unless we are connected to Adam. Them providing that link, quote, saves the living, end quote. It then uh, talks about the welding of dispensation keys, powers, and glories. This takes place in New Jerusalem, more specifically Adam on Diamon. The verse closes up with a reference to these events, quote from 2 Nephi 27, and again it shall come to pass, the Lord shall say unto him, Joseph Smith, that shall read the words that shall be delivered him, for as much as his people shall draw near unto me with their mouths and with their lips to honor me, but have removed their hearts far from me, and their fear towards me is taught by the precepts of men, therefore I will proceed to do a marvelous work among the people, yea, marvelous work and a wonder, for the wisdom of their wise and learned shall perish, and the understanding of their prudence shall be hid. And woe unto them that seek deep to hide their counsels from the Lord, and their works are in the dark. And they say, Who seeth us? And who knoweth us? And they they also say, Surely your turning of, of things upside down shall be esteemed as a potter's clay. But behold, I will show unto them, saith the Lord of hosts, that I know all their works. For shall the work say of him that made it, he made me not? Or shall the thing framed say of him that framed it, he hath no understanding? Alma 37, and now I would speak unto you those twenty, uh, speak unto you concerning those twenty-four plates that ye kept them, the mysteries and the works of darkness and the secret works or the secret works of those people who have been destroyed may be manifest unto this people. Yea, all their murders and robbings and their plunderings and all their wickedness and abominations may be made manifest unto this people. Yea, and that ye preserved these interpreters. For behold, the Lord saw that his people began to work in darkness, yea, work secret murders and abominations. Therefore the Lord said, If they did not repent, they should be destroyed from off the face of the earth. And the Lord said, I will prepare unto my servant Gazalem, Joseph Smith, a stone which shall shine forth in darkness and delight, that I may discover unto my people who serve me, that I may discover unto them the works of their brethren. This is also discussed in the Third Nephi chapter 24. At the very end of the chapter, yea, their secret works and their works of darkness and their wickedness and abominations. And now, my son, these interpreters are prepared that the word of God might be fulfilled, which he spake, saying, I will bring forth out of darkness unto light all their secret works and their abominations, and except they repent, I will destroy them from off the face of the earth. Wake up, America, and I will bring to light all their secrets and abominations unto every nation that shall hither that hereafter possess the land. And now, my son, we see that they did not repent, therefore they have been destroyed. And thus far the word of God has been fulfilled, yea, their secret abominations have been brought out of darkness and made known unto us. And now, my son, I, I command you that you retain all their oaths and their covenants and their agreements in their secret, abomina secret abominations, yea, and all their signs and their wonders ye shall keep from this people, that they know them not, lest uh, peradventure they should fall into darkness also and be destroyed for behold there is a curse upon all this land that destruction shall come upon all those workers of darkness according to the powers power of god when they are fully ripe 2015 therefore i desire that this people might not be destroyed therefore ye shall keep these secret plans of their oaths and their covenants from this people and only their wickedness and their murders and their abominations shall you make known unto them and you shall teach them to abhor such wickedness and abominations and murder. And you shall also teach them that these people were destroyed on account of their wickedness and abominations and their murders. For behold, 
They murdered all the prophets of the Lord who came among them to declare unto them concerning their iniquities. And the blood of those whom they murdered did cry unto the Lord their God for vengeance upon those who were their murderers. And thus the judgments of God did come upon these workers of darkness and secret combinations. Yea, and cursed be the land forever and ever unto those workers of darkness and secret combinations, even unto destruction, except they repent before they, before they are fully ripe. Too late for us. 2015, we are ripe. End from Alma 37. We know that all these events are tied to Joseph Smith. For further clarification and edification, or and edification, read or watch my paper, Joseph Smith to return. There is yet further light we can glean from the important importance talking about temple work at this time. In the teachings of the prophet Joseph Smith, we learn first parable par so this is the words of Joseph Smith, parable of the church in the last days. And again, another parable put he forth unto them. This is Joseph Smith talking about the, the Savior, having an allusion to the kingdom that should be set up just previous to or at the time of the harvest, which reads as follows. The kingdom of heaven is like a grain of mustard seed, which a man took and sowed in the field, which indeed is the least of all the seeds. But when he, it is grown, it is the greatest among herbs and becometh a tree, so that the birds of, of the air come and lodge in the branches thereof. Now we can discover plainly that this figure is given to represent the church as it shall come forth in the last days. Behold, the kingdom of heaven is likened unto it now. What is it like unto it? Let us take the Book of Mormon, which man took and hid in the field, securing it by his faith to spring up in the last days or in due time. Let us behold it coming forth out of the ground, which is indeed a accounted the least of all seeds but behold it branches forth yea even towering with lofty branches and godlike majesty until it like the mustard seed becomes the greatest of all herbs and it is truth and it has sprouted and come forth out of the earth and righteousness begins to look down from heaven and god is sending down his powers gifts and angels to lodge in the branches thereof the kingdom of heaven is like unto a mustard seed Behold, then, is not this the kingdom of heaven that is rising its head in the last days in the majesty of its God, even the church of the Latter-day Saints, like an impenetrable, immovable rock in the midst of the mighty deep, exposed to the storms and tempests of Satan, but has thus far remained steadfast and is still braving the mountains, mountain waves of opposition, which are driven by the tempest, tempestus, Whew. winds of stink sinking crafts which have dashed and are still dashing with tremendous foam across its triumphant brow urged onward with redoubled fury by the enemy of righteousness with his pitchfork of lies as you will see fairly represented in a cut contained in mr howe's mormonism unveiled and we hope that this adversary of truth will continue to stir up the sink of iniquity that the people may the more readily discern between the righteous and the wicked. We cannot be perfect without our dead. Now we're going full, full circle. The kingdom of heaven is like a grain of mustard seed. The mustard seed is small, but bring forth a large tree and the fowls lodge in the branches. The fowls are the angels. Thus angels come down, combine together to gather their children and gather them. We cannot be made perfect without them, nor they without us. When these things are done, the Son of Man will descend, the Ancient of Days will sit, we may come to an innumerable company of angels, right? This right here is referring to what? This is referring to uh, Revelation chapter 7. Um, this obviously has not happened, although some people believe it already has. Have communion with and receive instruction from them. So he's identifying this uh, event as being Adam on Diamond, where the Ancient of Days is also there. That did not happen at the year 2000. Um, Paul told about Moses proceeding, spoke of the children of Israel being baptized. He knew this, and that all their ordinances and blessings were in the church. Paul had these things, and we may have the fowls of heaven lodged in the branches, etc. The horn made war with the saints and overcame them. That's referring to the Assyrian. Uh, as well, until the Ancient of Days came, that's in Daniel. Judgment was given to the saints of the Most High from the Ancient of Days, Adam on Diamond. The time came that the saints possessed the kingdom. 
This is not this not only makes us ministers here, but in eternity. Okay, and quote from the Prophet Joseph Smith. The angels, your ancestors, gathering the wheat into the barn and the wicked to be destroyed, has reference to the wheat and the tares, the ten virgins, etc. The sealing of all dispensations together, the ancient of days, etc. I'll deal with Adam on Diamond in New Jerusalem, going back to President Nelson's very next line. The time is coming when those who do not obey the Lord obey the Lord will be separated from those who do. Back to my commentary. Oh, I guess we just follow President Nelson's scripture study. We both arrived at the wheat and the tares at the same time. It's almost as though President Nelson understands the chronology. Back to President Nelson. Our safest assurance is to continue to be worthy of admit admission to his holy house. The greatest gift you could give the, to the Lord is to keep yourself unspotted from the Lord, worthy to attend to his holy house. His gift to you will be the peace and security of knowing that you are worthy to meet him whenever that time comes. In addition to temple work, the coming forth of the Book of Mormon. Hmm, that's interesting. He now pivots into the Book of Mormon like a mustard seed out of the ground is a sign to the entire world the Lord has commenced to gather Israel and fulfill the covenants he made with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The Book of Mormon declares the doctrine of the gathering. It causes people to learn about Jesus Christ, to believe his gospel, and to join his church. In fact, if there was no Book of Mormon, the promised gathering of Israel would not occur. Missionary work is also crucial to that gathering. Servants of the Lord go forth proclaiming the restoration. In many nations, our members and missionaries have searched for those of scattered Israel. They have hunted for them out of the holes of the rocks. And they have fished for them as in ancient days. Missionary work connects people to the covenant the Lord made with Abraham anciently. Thou shalt be a blessing unto thy seed after thee, that in their hands they shall bear this ministry and priesthood unto all nations. And I will bless them through thy name, for as many as receive the, this gospel shall be called after thy name, and shall be accounted thy seed, and shall rise up and bless thee as their father." Missionary work is only the beginning of the blessing, the fulfillment, the consummation of those blessings come as those who have entered the waters of baptism perfect their lives to the point that they may enter the holy temple, receiving an endowment there, seals members of the church to the Abrahamic covenant. Uh, a little commentary from me. Once again, here he is referring to the process of first Elias, second Elijah, third Messiah. Back to Nelson. The choice to come into Christ is not a matter of physical location. It is a matter of individual commitment. All members of the church have access to the doctrine, ordinances, priesthood, keys, and blessings of the gospel, regardless of their location. People can be brought to the knowledge of their Lord without leaving their homelands. True, in the early days of the church, conversion often meant emigration as well, but now the gathering takes place in each nation. The Lord has decreed to us that, or to, uh, decreed the establishment of Zion, in each realm where he has given his saints their birth and nationality. The place of gathering for Brazilian saints is in Brazil. The place of gathering for Nigerian saints is in Nigeria. The place of gathering for Korean saints is in Korea. Zion is the pure in heart. It is wherever righteous saints are. My commentary. I find it very interesting here that President Nelson mentions this and then only lists non-Ephraim countries. Things are going to start happening with the epicenter being in the United States. The remnant of her seed, those members of the church worldwide, will become targets of the dragon once the dragon realizes it can't have the child, which is New Jerusalem. I believe President Nelson is pre prepping these non-Ephraimites worldwide, letting them know that the Lord loves them, hasn't forgotten about them, and they shouldn't be so focused on physical location and feel left out when things start happening. Back to Nelson, spiritual security will always depend on how you live your lives, not where you live your life. I promise that if you will do your best to exercise faith in Jesus Christ and access the power of, it, of his atonement through repentance, you will have the knowledge and power of God to help us take the blessings of the restored gospel of the Jesus of Jesus Christ to every nation, kindred tongue, and people, and to prepare the world for the second coming of the Lord. My commentary, this has reference to the 144,000. Prophet Joseph Smith thought that once these events kickstarted the New Jerusalem, the saints will hardly be able to cross the world, meaning members think that the gospel has to be preached in every language, country, etc. before the events in New Jerusalem, but Joseph Smith thought that even after the events, there won't be enough time. If the half an hour of silence in heaven is 21 years, ask yourself, 
Do you think that we could talk to every human being on the planet in 25 years? We just couldn't. Back to Nelson, the second coming. The Lord will return to the land that he made holy by his first mission there in mortality. In triumph, he will come again to Jerusalem in royal robes of red to symbolize his blood, which ooze from every pore. He shall return to the holy city there and elsewhere. The glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together. My commentary. Christians do not understand LDS theology when it comes to the events at New Jerusalem, Mount of Olives, and the great and dreadful day. President Nelson, up to this point in his talk, has been pretty much exclusively talking about New Jerusalem, whether members realize it or not. We know from Brigham Young, as well as others, that when Christ lives with his saints in New Jerusalem, the rest of the world won't know it or believe it. Years later, Christ appears on the Mount of Olives, which event is what most Christians are familiar with. President Nelson does mention that, the, that Christ will have other appearances, and then mentions the great and dreadful day where all flesh shall see it together. Back to Nelson's talk. His name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. He will govern from two world capitals, one in Old Jerusalem and the other in the New Jerusalem, which will be built upon the American continent. From these centers, he will direct the affairs of his church and kingdom. My commentary. So President Nelson is saying that the New Jerusalem will happen. He is clearly saying that. New Jerusalem has to happen before Old Jerusalem. Old Jerusalem has to happen before the great and dreadful day. The law will go forth from New Jerusalem and the word from Old Jerusalem. A common misconception in the church is that the priesthood will save the Constitution in Washington when it dangles by the thread. This actually was never said. America will be presented with a choice. The Lord explains that choice in 30 by 24. Isaiah explains that choice in multiple locations. And Brigham Young taught of that choice as well. If the Gentiles, just to name a few, if the Gentiles repent, America can be saved. If America does not repent, the Constitution would be saved in celestial law from New Jerusalem, not from Washington. Continuing, continuing with Nelson. Another temple will yet be built in Jerusalem. From that temple, he shall reign forever as Lord of Lords. Water will issue from under the temple. Waters of the Dead Sea will be healed. My commentary. These events happen between the events of the Mount of Olives and the Great and Dreadful Day. Because we know that the waters are not healed until after the events at the Mount of Olives. This is the temple that fulfills the prophecies. It is not some random temple built by Jewish hands today. Continuing with Nelson, in that day, he will bear new titles as the Lord and be surrounded by special saints. He will bear new titles and be surrounded by special saints. This is the opening of the seventh seal, folks. Revelation 7. So Nelson is pointing at this and saying it is a future event. He will be known as Lord of Lords and King of Kings, and they that will be with him will be those who who are called and chosen and faithful to their trust here in mortality. Then he shall reign forever and ever. My commentary, you have to understand points of reference. President Nelson was talking about between the Mount of Olives and the Great and Dreadful Day. Then he says, in that day, meaning during that time period. And then he goes on to explain the Lord will already have new titles, including King of Kings. In order for the Lord to be King of Kings, he has to have kings to be king over. And... A kingdom. These are those special saints. This uh, refers exclusively to the events around New Jerusalem. Once again, President Nelson is identifying the time period of New Jerusalem in, in the past from the events of Mount of Olives onward. Nelson, again, the earth will be returned to its para paradisiacal whew, I hate that word. State, and my wife's even worse at it, parad Paradi paradisical paradi paradisiacal state and be made new i always say parrot 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 para, 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 and then i can't say the rest of the word there will be <laughs> there will be a new heaven and a new earth in our charge it is our privilege 
to help prepare the world for that day. My commentary. This is referring to the great and dreadful day he has now finished his macro timeline. He started the paper with the restoration of celestial law. That's the fullness of the gospel. He then goes into the ten tribes returning, all the events in New Jerusalem. That's in the, the third Nephi, chapter 21. He then goes into the Mount of Olives and finishes it at the great and dreadful day. This is exactly my macro timeline. He has now given us the macro timeline, and now he is going to go back in time to help us prepare for the events shortly to come in our future. Back to Nelson, face the future with faith. Meanwhile, here and now, we live in a time of turmoil, earthquakes and tsunamis, wreck devastation, governments collapse and will collapse, economic stresses are severe, the family is under attack, and divorce, divorce rates are rising. We have great cause for concern, but we do not need need to let our fears displace our faith. We can combat those fears by strengthening our faith. Why do we need such resilient faith? Because difficult days are ahead. Rarely in the future will it be easy or popular to be faithful Latter-day Saints. Each of us will be tested. The Apostle Paul warned that in the latter days, those who diligently follow the Lord shall suffer persecution. That very persecution can either crush you into silent weakness or motivate you to be more exemplary and courageous in your daily lives. My commentary. President Nelson knows what the effects of the restoration of the fullness of the gospel, also known as celestial law, will be. He knows at the very least that the majority of the days of tribulation are post-April 2020. This is discussed in great detail in my understanding Isaiah chapters. Back to Nelson. How you deal with life's trials is part of the development of your faith. Strength comes when you remember that you have a divine nature, an inheritance of infinite worth. The Lord has, re has reminded you, your children and your grandchildren, that you are lawful heirs that you have been reserved in heaven for your specific time and place to be born, to grow and become his standard bearers and covenant people. My commentary. Those that the Lord loveth, the Lord chasteneth. Those that are pushed hard, much is expected from them. But don't ever lose sight or forget the blessings that also can be yours. Don't underestimate your foreordination and your blood right heritage. If you are a millennial man of Ephraim, I wrote a paper entitled The Truth About LDS Millennial Men of Ephraim that I hope you take the time to read. I wrote it for you. Back to Nelson. As you walk in the Lord's path of righteousness, you'll be blessed to, con to continue in his goodness and to be a light and a savior unto his people. And we go full circle when we read Doctrine and Covenants 86. Therefore, thus saith the Lord unto you, with whom the priesthood hath continued through your lineage of your fathers. For ye are lawful heirs according to the flesh, and have been hid from the world with Christ in God. Therefore, your life and the priesthood have remained, and must needs remain through you and your lineage until the restoration of all things spoken by the mouth of all the holy prophets since the world began. Therefore, blessed are ye, if ye continue in my goodness, a light unto the Gentiles, and through this priesthood, a Savior unto my people in Israel." The Lord hath said it. Amen. Back to Nelson. Do whatever it takes to strengthen your faith in Jesus Christ by increasing your understanding of the doctrine taught in his restored church and by relentlessly, relentlessly seeking truth. Anchored in pure doctrine, you will be able to step forward with faith and dog persistence and cheerfully do all that lies in your power to fulfill the purposes of the Lord. My commentary. This is the key to surviving the future and the entire purpose for me putting out these papers. I want to help people increase their testimony of the Savior and deepen their understanding of the doctrine taught in his restored church. Back to Nelson. You will have days when you will be discouraged, so pray for courage not to give up. Sadly, some who you thought were your friends will betray you, and some things will simply seem unfair. My commentary. If you know anything about celestial law, there are a lot of things in it that on the surface might seem unfair. This concept has been on my mind a lot recently. We need to do all that we can do, and then we need to trust in the Lord. For example, the Lord might go to those who have temporally prepared, those that have a food storage, a water storage, etc., when calamities strike, and then ask them to donate everything they have to the church. This might seem unfair, like you are giving your hard work away to people who didn't work. 
remember the story of the plastic necklace. There is a good chance that your plastic necklace will be going to members that did not prepare. And as soon as you give them that plastic necklace, you and only you will be given the pearl necklace. If you are not familiar with the story, I have a paper video of it. The same thing can be said about your friends. You might lose a plastic necklace friend, but there is a pearl necklace friend waiting for you. Back to Nelson. However, I promise you that as you follow Jesus Christ, you will find sustained peace and true joy as you keep your covenants with increasing precision and as you defend the church and the kingdom on the earth today. The Lord will bless you with strength and wisdom to accomplish what only members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints can accomplish. My commentary. Now, there's a lot of members you could find as YouTubers, writers, etc., that believe that non-members of the Church can and are and will be fulfilling special signs of the times. Now, this is wrong. Only members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints with the priesthood and the foreordination as President Nelson confirmed here, will be these agents. Back to Nelson to end this up. We are to be builders of an individual faith. Individual faith. Okay, no collectivism. In the Lord Jesus Christ and faith in his church. We are to build families and to be sealed in the holy temples. We are to build the church and the kingdom of God upon the earth. We are to prepare for our own divine destiny, glory, immortality, and eternal life. I humbly testify to you that, as the prophet Joseph Smith proclaimed, the restored gospel of Jesus Christ will go forth boldly, nobly, and independently till it has penetrated every continent, visited every clime, swept every country, and sounded in every ear till the purposes of, the God, purposes of God shall be accomplished, and the great Jehovah shall say the work is done. We are engaged in the work of Almighty God. I pray for his blessing to be with each and every one of you. And I would just say we share this with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.